What I was going to ask is somebody to, from the audience, if they wouldn't mind coming up and being my model, and we're going to go through what a cosmetic consultation in my office would be like. We have any takers? Come on down. <laughs> Great. And we actually have prizes for you <laughs> when you volunteer. <laughs> All righty. There we go. So the first thing we talk about, you know, when you come into the office is really, you know, strategies for really making your skin the best it can be, okay? And the most important thing that I want to tell you is sunscreen. I know you all heard about sunscreen, but it's really, really important nowadays to understand that it's really important for you, despite the, the myth that you're hearing about vitamin D. We had the guy, Dr. Halla, come to the university, actually the university, and also at the American Academy of Dermatology, and we grilled him. As dermatologists, what are you telling these people you know, not to use vitamin, you know, to get their vitamin D and not use sunscreen? And he actually admitted, okay, just 15 minutes a day. But we're saying still, it's important. You still can get it exogenously. And the important thing to remember, and I know I'm not talking about vitamin D, but the bottom line is, is that wearing sunscreen doesn't really, you know, uh, you know make you not get your vitamin D. But you ha so you have to do it every day. It's really important. And what's the right strength? SPF 30. Okay, that's what we're telling patients. So really, I'm going to pass around. You know, a lot of people say to me, Ah, oh, sunscreen, I don't like that sunscreen. It's so yucky, you know, it gets in my eyes when I run, and it burns, and it stings, and it hurts. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to pass this around. I want you to all to just feel this on your skin. This is one of the nicest sunscreens, I think, around. It's titanium and zinc. Zinc, you say, that's when you were a lifeguard, right? You got that white, pasty look. Ah, so this is great stuff. <laughs> Put a little bit on your hand and pass it around. It's really great. It's actually made by a plastic surgeon. I'm not you know, out here to sell anything, but the bottom line is I think it's a really great to demystify sunscreen. So that's the most important thing I want to tell you tonight. All right, so we're going to actually have some fun with you. What's your first name, hon? Mary Hi, Mary Eileen. <laughs> there it is. Wow. <laughs> here we go. So I want you, when you come into my office, I'd like you to take a look in the mirror. I think you know what you want to get done, but the most important thing is to really help you. And here's my magic wand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to give you what you need tonight to transform your face. Poof, if I can wave my magic wand, I mean, what are we going to do for you? Okay. What bothers you the most? Show me what bothers you. What bugs you? <laughs> the wrinkles and the dark circles. I think a lot of women complain about that, right? And what we found is, is that there are things that we can do for both but not 100%, okay? So when we're talking about the periorbital wrinkles, so the crow's feet, can you smile for me? As you can see, if you look at Eileen, you can see those somewhat etched in lines. <laughs> How about bring your eyebrows together for me, like really frown. Yeah, so she has maybe one child. <laughs> you see that line there, those glabella wrinkles. And raise the forehead up, <laughs> raise them all the way up. And those transverse wrinkles. And I was watching some of you out there, and I know I'm getting them too. It, it, it happens as we, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s. And so people talk about what? Botox. You've all heard about Botox, right? Botulinum toxin. Oh my God. You know, putting in a, in a potent, you know, paralytic agent. What's that going to do for you? Well, it does a lot. And it's been tested since the 1960s. And do you know how it was discovered? Dr. Alan Scott, who's an ophthalmologist, actually was using it for blepharospasm for patients that had problems, you know, in their periocular regions, you know, spasming. And he put it in there and he found that it stopped. Lo and behold, it paralyzed the muscle for a temporary period of time. So what happened was Dr. Jean Carruthers, who's a personal friend of mine from uh, Vancouver, went down and she was studying with him and doing a fellowship. And she noticed that, you know, patients were looking a little better. And so a, a mother who was getting it for her child said, let me, let me try it. So she got it on one side of her face before her child. And lo and behold, her wrinkles went away. Light bulb and $2 billion later, <laughs> Botox was born. And so her husband's a dermatologist and we're colleagues. And so they really worked out and mapped out this system. And so, you know, there's good, bad, and the ugly, right? So let's talk about that. You know, basically Botox does its job. It lasts anywhere from three to six months, okay? As you get it, it lasts longer. So the first time you get it, you might say three to four months. The next time you get shot up, <laughs> it might be four to five months. And then max is about six months. So as we've studied this, with time, you know, you, saw, you seem to biofeedback. Give yourself 
an education because you don't wrinkle like that again for whatever reason. And I've done this with my nurses who have those lines as they're seeing patients and they're like, you know, <laughs> this type of thing. Or people that are, you know, on that treadmill trying to get healthy, right? <laughs> but they're making those frowns and they're making those lines deeper. So by relaxing it, I, I took a lady that almost looked like a Sharpay. She, I mean, her, she was fit. You would have loved her, Andrea. <laughs> I, mean, I know I'm your disappointment, but she was, she, she was absolutely perfectly fit. But she had the lines and I said, ha ha. <laughs> now, now here's where I can help you. And we did. We did for a year. We did her every four months, and we did her bow ties. And oh my God, what a difference at the end of it! You know, at the end of it. So for this nice lady, I would I would use the botulinum toxin, and I would put it into the crow's feet. I put a little bit here, and I also can give her a little bit of a brow lift. Now she's she's not so bad, is she? I mean, when you look at her, <laughs> poor woman. That's why I had prizes for you, by the way. If you go through this torture. <laughs> But I'm also going to bring out, so you see her little crinkle? We're all getting, I noticed that one day, I kept saying, what's that hair there, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a wrinkle. And basically we do it when we push her faces and smush them up against the pillow, right? We create these wrinkles. And you can actually put it in these, what we call the bunny lines. Like smell something bad for me. You see them? <laughs> and so Botox can go there as well. So it's really kind of cool. And you know, bot botulinum toxin is not only for cosmetic, it's actually been found for what? For, for, for medical uses. We use it for hyperhidrosis. We use it in patients that have had, you know, the sialuria, you know, patients with Parkinson's disease. They actually use it for rectal fistulas, to, to relax the fistula. I mean, it's been used for a lot of different disorders. It's actually one of the highest uh, uses is, is children's hospital for people, you know, the children with cerebral palsy that have contractures and to relax them. So it's really quite interesting and it works. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, can you have a problem with, sure, with anything, you know? You can get brow ptosis, which means that your brow drops a little bit or your eyelid drops. But if it happens, it only lasts three weeks. But there's something in the office we can use to, re to stop that. So that's an important thing for you to know. But you might have heard, oh my God, I read where somebody died from botulinum toxin. Oh, well, they did. And you know how that happened? Some crazy chiropractor <laughs> who got his hands on in Tucson, Arizona, he had friends that worked in a laboratory. And they got rat botulinum toxin. And what did he do? He didn't realize that the units that he was using was different than human using a unit. So he gave it to his patients. I'm going to give you Botox. And he was giving them 100,000 international units. You say, well, what does that mean? That's a lot. For example, in my friend here, <laughs> I would probably use no more than 50 units. He did 100,000. So what did he do? He put two people in the hospital on respirators because they couldn't breathe. Okay, there's a difference between rat Botox and human Botox, for sure, and there's, we, we know that, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. uh, it's important. The other thing we can do with it, I was looking around, some people, Jeffrey, oh, the great beauty just died, Elizabeth Taylor. Look at her eyebrows. She's got the best eyebrows, just Google her, you see. I love her eyebrows, you know, they have that beautiful arching. The most feminine look is eyebrows. I'm looking at you. You have beautiful eyebrows. You know, you, a nice arch. Yeah, you. You. <laughs> she wins. <laughs> they nice ar arch shaped. You know. You know. We, we like to do that, right, ladies? We like to pluck them or have them waxed or whatever. Botox can help you with that. It can actually lift. How does it do it? Well, there you go. <laughs> Perfect timing. Now I do want to point out, one eyebrow is lower, right, and one's up. So I can actually fix that for her with botulinum toxin. What we would do is we would relax you here, okay? Either relax this a little bit or let this muscle take over by relaxing this muscle over here. Because now this has to work harder and it pulls up. And so you can actually get them to even out. A lady in today that had what they call a gummy smile, you see her gums, you know what I mean? We can actually try to get ready for a wedding. And so she wants to get that done in her upper lip so you can bring the lip down so she doesn't have that gummy smile. But you could actually put it in depressor angularis where she doesn't have it. You know, I think I'm getting, uh, <laughs> you know, right in here for these melolabial lines to lift them up. You're antagonizing muscles. So what happens is you take a muscle that's pulling and you relax it and then it corrects. You understand what I'm saying? So what we want to do is try to create an arch. If I want to create more of an arch in her if she needed it, then what I would do is really relax the middle. So this comes down, this goes up, and she gets more of that dramatic Elizabeth, Iba, uh, Elizabeth Taylor eyebrow. You know, so it's important. I mean, these are things that simple things that can be done with just botulinum toxin. Who knew, right? <laughs> it's really quite interesting. Perioral lines around, you know, those lip, the lip lines, that, lipstick lines that go in. You don't have them. But if you did, you know, we would actually put it around the lips. Now, people that are singers, trumpet players, don't do it because it relaxes it such that when you go to sip something, you, you know, you could dribble a little bit for the first week or two. 
That's a caution. <laughs> Some people that are very, you know, I, not as well endowed, <laughs> they, they actually use it to bring their nipples up or those decollete wrinkles. You can use Botox there. It's really amazing the different areas you can use Botox, you know, but in any of them. For you, I would do some in the crow's feet, in her glabella, this is between the eyebrows, in the forehead to give her, to write this eyebrow, and I would also use it in her bunny lines. That's to start. Anything else? <laughs> Poor woman. <laughs> now, she asked me about the other thing was the dark circles, right? Dark circles. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> She's saying if she gets some sleep, <laughs> she's better. And it's the truth, you know. I saw my niece, she's five years old at the time, and she had these awful dark circles. And I'm like, look at it, she's only five. How could it possibly be aging or this or that or the other thing? When you look at this, you would actually biopsy this, et cetera, et cetera. There's no one thing, no one answer for, for it. Part of the reason for dark circles is just thickened skin. So using exfoliants like alpha hydroxy acids and retinoids can actually make it look better, okay? A lot of your cosmetics have diffusers in them to make them lighter so that when the light hits it, it diffuses the light and makes them look less deep and therefore less dark, okay? Um, other reasons are really is that you're actually seeing the muscle, and obviously my five-year-old niece at the time, you know, you could actually see the very thin skin. It's very, very thin compared to the rest of the body. This is the thinnest skin right here. Even on my body, it's the thinnest <laughs> One thing thin. Uh, but in any event, the bottom line is, is that you can actually see that dark muscle underneath there. And so what's happening is you're like telescoping it. You're seeing that dark, and you think of a slab of beef. You know, you go <laughs> red, brown beef right there. That's what's underneath here, okay? And so what happens is you're seeing that. So how do you, how do you repair that? Well, you can actually use fillers. These are what we call, you know, stuffings, <laughs> you know, to put under the skin to lift it up so that it camouflages. it. That's another way to do it. And if the skin is really super wrinkly and thin, you know, then you would actually use a laser. In your case, I would start with just simple products. Okay, we'll show you. <laughs> okay, now, anything else bug you? Not really? You're happy? <laughs> can, can <laughs> so she comes in, she, she walks out looking, feeling worse than when she came in, right? <laughs> you have a little freckling, you know? So, see, some people do, and that's what patients tell me, but see, to a dermatologist, we think, sun damage, you know what I mean? But if you like them, you can keep them, but some people don't like them. So what do I do for them? We do microdermabrasions, that's a sanding type, uh, down type of technique, very superficial, you know, it comes in, you can leave, you can have it what they call lunchtime type of thing. Light chemical peels, like uh, salicylic acid peels or glycolic acid peels can help, you know, not to be all an angel. But then we also use bleaching agents at home. Okay, so those are different things that we can do. And obviously a laser will take them away, but I would not recommend that for you because she likes her freckles, so we're not going to torture you. Now, this time of year, right, a lot of people are going to wear sandals, right? And they look at the back of their heel, and they're all cracked, right? Rough, dry, run out to get a pedicure. Next week, it's the same thing. You could be at the pedicure office every other day you know, what I mean? to try to get these down. So there's products that have these alpha hydroxy acids in them to help the heel. You, you, you take a little uh, pumice stone, you put these 20% alpha hydroxy acid, the fruit acids, on it, and it actually does cause it to slough, okay? And you do that every night before you go to bed. Really, you can see your pedicurist maybe just to get, you know, some nail color change, but that's about it. And so that's a really nice product. And actually, that's one of the products that I have for you tonight. <laughs> so, okay. And then in addition, we need something for our bodies. The most important thing is really to, a lot of people like that supple, soft skin. Do you ever get that where on the back of your arm, it gets really rough, you know, especially in the winter time, it looks like little pimples on the back, you think you have acne. It's called keratosis pilaris. And it's really kind of interesting. There are things you can do for it, okay? And I'm going to give you something. You may or may not need it, but you, need, you could use the body lotion. This is called a retexturizing body lotion with an SPF 15 in it, just for daily use. But if you're going out in the sun, you're going to wear a what? Oh, there you go. Okay, great. The SPF 30 or greater. Okay, that's really key. Okay, and so that's important so that, you know, this is you can put from your neck down, and we didn't forget your face. Okay, this is, these are alpha hydroxy acids. They have different concentrations. I just happened to pick light, and we have other products. We're not married to one company here. We're not the commercial sponsor for this company, you know, but they happen to give us free products, so I'm giving it to you. To, and I like them. I, 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 we use them, and we really like them a lot. So we've got a face lotion for you once a day in the morning. You got your body lotion after your shower. You got to heal, and you're going to be all set for the summer. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I have, do we have time for one other person? I got another bag of goodies. <laughs>
you want to be the person? We can do one other person. I'm actually going to pick, can I pick you? <laughs> I'm going to pick this. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because Eileen, we're just taking different, I'm looking around and I'm trying to think of different things I want to tell you. <laughs> All righty. Thank you very much. <laughs> and your name is? Valerie. Valerie, hi. <laughs> okay, here's the magic wand. Here we go. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> really? I know what you mean. Valerie, when you look at yourself, what bugs you? Oh, She's got a couple here, kids there, here. don't you? This is, this is um, probably 25 years of sunning with baby oil up to the age of 30. Yeah, I, I hear no you. sunscreen as a child. Hear that? <laughs> and she, she's pretty fair, you know what I mean? So she's going to get more sun, and like you and you, you know, I'm looking around all you fair people back there. You know, I mean, you really do want to, you know, concentrate on your sunscreen. That's number one. It's your most important beauty product of anything we can give you. Okay? All right. So look, we're talking about number one here. Did you see those lines when I first walked in? I did. <laughs> Scouting around. <laughs> Andrea's looking at me from the neck down. I'm looking at the neck up. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about you in the private parts. And she's definitely going to help it up here between the ears. And I need all of it. So I need all your cards. <laughs> the bottom line is, is that when I look at there, I really think Botox would help. But is it her only answer? Maybe not. Unlike you, where your wrinkles at rest are mild and you just have that little you know, irregularity in your brow, she's wrinkles at rest, but some of those are etched in. Do you see how you can really see it right there? And frown for us, like really bring it in. Yeah, see, I can put a little penny in there and I bet you it'll stay. <laughs> so when they get that deep, the Botox can help, it can soften it, but she's still going to see it. And then you'll come back and she'll say, Dr. Dietrich, that Botox didn't work. And I can understand why you would say that. Because I wouldn't have, I should have told you, and this is why I'm telling you, is that you might need two things. I know. So basically, we have to put it at rest to stop that kinetic motion of the wrinkle. And then we have to put a stuffing in the wrinkle, so to speak, to lift it and separate it like a good Playtex bra. <laughs> you know? Because the whole idea is, is that we have attrition of the muscle. By doing this constantly, we're etching that in. Okay, and then what happens is the mattress of the skin called the dermis is really actually wearing away. So there's less collagen. So we want to put something into that mattress to replace what's gone, and that would be fillers. So what are fillers? You know, I started thinking when you were talking about nutrition, we really actually talk about the same thing. We have protein, which is botulinum toxin. It's a protein. We have carbohydrates, which is our fillers, which we're going to talk about. And then we, of course, have fat. And we could actually take it here and put it up here. I, I have enough for the whole room here. <laughs> but in any event, you know, do we want to do that? That's two processes. You know, the fat, you have to harvest it, and then you have to transplant it. Where the fillers, you have it already, boom, boom, you're done. You know, you come, come in, and within a half an hour, you walk out, you know, rejuvenated. So what I would do here is I probably put a little filler. And you probably see on the television, get rid of your parentheses, you know. It's not only your parentheses. I don't like that ad because, first of all, you know, even some children have parentheses. You know, you look at little kids, they've got those lines. So do, do they need fillers? No. But, you know, the bottom line, you know, is, is that you do want to put, you know, these hyaluronic acid, your starches, your carbohydrates, back into the skin. We have a lot of it when we're a kid. When we, hyaluronic acid, we have tons of it when we're a kid. By the age of 30, we start losing it. So every decade, we're dropping it. And so that's the problem. So we want to put it back in because it holds a thousand times its weight in water to itself. It's like a dermal sponge you know, under your skin. So we're, by putting it in, it actually helps to keep that built and buoyant. Now, I look at you and I say, nasolabial pulse, I have them myself. <laughs> and here, that's another place where she can get them. Now, I was just saying to her, I don't like that ad about the parentheses, because why? If you think about it, and I've actually talked this, taught this to the dermatology community, we really need to think about the cheeks. Because if you actually, you know, many of us go like this. And as, as you do that, as you do that, that those lines go away, don't they? Right? So what happens is if we use fillers to lift and give her more cheeks, she has less weight in the nasolabial fold. So when we do, it's not only important just to fill here, but maybe fill a little bit in here, because we start losing that with time. And if you look, look at people who have lost weight, that's where they lose it a lot in their cheeks, and they start looking gaunt. You know what I mean? So you know, that's another area. Because if you look at our Valerie, right in here, she's getting a little depression. And what, if we lifted her back, to probably the way she was when she was 10, right? <laughs> you know, and give her a little bit more here into the cheek. You'll see that lifting and softening of the nasolabial folds. We can also do it in, down in here into the pre-gel sulcus and the melolabial folds. 
and we also can use it in the lips, you know? And we can actually enhance the lips, and a lot of us like to draw them on because as time goes by, we lose them. You know, it's better when you have a, an overbite because, you know, my, my, actually my prosthodontist told me this when I was 26, keep it, you know, you look like Ingrid Bergman. I still don't look like Ingrid Bourbon, but you know, I have the, you know, so I, and I have less lines on my upper lip. That might be part and parcel of the reason, because as we as we as we age, what happens? Everything falls down and back, okay. And as we lose that, you ever notice as as people get older that the that the lips go in, and they don't have lips anymore. Well, what we're trying to do is bring them back out, and we can do that with these fillers like hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid has been tested in over a million people worldwide. And the incidence of infection or problems is less than 0.25%, which is really pretty good. So if I'm going to start with fillers, there's many, by the way. There's Radius, there's Sculpture. These are, these are different agents. These are contouring agents. These last longer, but they have a little bit more issues with them that you have to know about. For example, hyaluronic acid, if we were to inject you, you know, all that glitters is in gold, you can get bruising. And, and I always tell patients, that's one of the natural side effects of the bruising you know, and swelling. And that swelling will last anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Okay, Val, you're, you're still on board with me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but you know, so the, and the bottom line is, is that, yeah, 24 to 48 hours is the swelling and the bruising. You can ice that. But the key is not to have, and this is the reason why we have these consultations, stop your aspirin, Motrin, Advil, you know, anything where you could possibly use anticoagulates and make yourself bruise more, okay? And that's key because people come in and they've taken their fish oil, for example, Andrea. Oh my gosh, they ooze and ooze and ooze. And I did a lady today and she was oozing and oozing. She forgot to stop her fish oil, you know? And, and really, it really is a wonderful anticoagulant, I'll tell you. So the bottom line is these are the keys that we have to tell you. Now you also have, <laughs> <you're ready? laughs> poor woman. <laughs> the other thing is, is, and again, she would be a perfect person. We call this dramatic elasis. Do you see upper eyelids? You might look in, your, in the mirror. There you go. But you can do that with Botox. I just mentioned that. So you really, I can actually give her a look that like that, you know, to just lift them a little bit so that she doesn't have that heaviness here. And a lot of um, ophthalmologic surgeons, you know, actually do it first so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. You know what I mean? Before you do like Kenny Rogers with the cut. I think he would have rather had Botox first before he got cut because he looks totally different. Edward. This is a temporary thing, and you can see if you like it. If you don't like it, you don't get the blepharoplasty. You know what I'm saying? Most people today are doing Botox and fillers as their number one and number two. It has really, I mean, this has gone off the market. There's a 57% increase in Botox and fillers because people don't want to go under the knife. Remember the lady from the first the Wise Club? Went to have a little fat reduced, right? Died on the table. So not, not that that should scare you because after all, we have, and especially here at Penn, we have excellent, excellent plastic surgeons and oculoplastic surgeons and all of that. You know, but people like to try a little bit, you know, like, like, like to kick the tires before they buy the car, right? <laughs> and this is a good way to do that. It's a nice way to introduce yourself into cosmetics, you know, and really get on board. How long does the fillers last? Great question. The, the studies have shown that they first came out, we, we did some trials, it was six months. And then we actually went back, because patients were coming back and saying, okay, do, but, you know, do I need it again? You know, I don't think so. And you look at the patient, they still look great. They said, nah, come back in another six months. So what happened was they actually went for the indication for one year. So these hyaluronic fillers like Restylane and uh, Juvederm, okay, both of them have last now one year. And I've had patients go to two years with them. And I think that's just because you put enough in it the first time. You know, if you, if you only fill, you know, if you're one pint down and you'd give just a half a pint, you know, you're not really, <laughs> you're not doing the person justice. You have to fill to capacity, so to speak. And you don't know that until you really get in. Because some people will fool you, you know. You can see some people that have really deep lines, you know, and they, uh, you know that they're going to need them. But people that have some shallow lines, you might need a little bit more. And obviously it's priced accordingly, you know, to, you know, uh, the more you use, it will get just a little bit cheaper. Okay, and so the, the answer to your question is one year. Okay, some people longer. Now the others like Sculptra, you're going to see a lot. The daytime soaps now they have Sculptra. You know, and you know what Sculptra is? It's lactic acid, it's sour milk. What happened was I was doing a lot of work. I actually worked with the guy that invented alpha hydroxy acids. He's a Philadelphian, and we, you know we're really lucky in, in Pennsylvania because we had the two major scientific breakthroughs in topical skincare: alpha hydroxy acids and retinoids. Nobody to date, I don't care what any oil LA tells you, <laughs> you know, the bottom line, it's a great product, but, you know, the two most important scientific advances with scientific studies underneath their belt are alpha hydroxy acids and retinoids. And Dr. Kligman, who passed last year, 
was a personal friend, a mentor. He, he was the retin-A maven. And of course, he was here at University of Pennsylvania. And then we had Dr. Uh, Eugene Van Scott, who's the alpha hydroxy acid maven. And I worked with him and developed a peel system for him. And you know, it's really quite, you know, quite fascinating. And these are the fruit acids, glycolic, lactic, citric, all those acids he developed. You know, think about it for the body. Glycolic acid is from sugar cane. Uh-oh. <laughs> but it works for the skin. <laughs> You're just applying it. Not, you know, like Rhoda Morgan says, well, for me, I applied it and <laughs> I should have just ate the junk. But in any event, the bottom line is, the bottom line is that they work, you know. And then you have, um, you know, citric acid from citrus fruits, right? Lactic acid, sour milk. So when they take these crystals, they actually take the crystals and they put it into the skin. They actually saw the skin plump up. And they used it for AIDS patients, you know. And, and actually makes a big deal of difference. And, and it lasts 25 months, so two years and a month, okay? So there's some contouring agents, which the difference being, the contouring, you wouldn't see the results right away. And you'll see it immediately, but then it'll fade off in a week. And then it takes like two or three injection sessions to really get it. I, I, I make the analogy, it's like if you go to, you know, Waterloo Gardens and you buy your beautiful daffodils and you just plop them into the ground and now your garden's filled, okay? But guess what? After that season, they're gone. That's a, that's a, that's a filler. That is like your wrestling and your Jupiter. After that year, <laughs> they're gone. Whereas sculpture is like putting a seed in. Okay? You plant the seed and you've got to wait. And you might have fertilize it and <laughs> give it a little bit more and so forth. And then you see your garden. And then that's going to last you about two years, a little bit more. So those are the difference between a contouring agent and a filler. Okay? Time. I'm going to stop there. <laughs> what a wonderful segment. <laughs> and I have something for you as well. <laughs> These are your good. <laughs> it's this, I, I, I kept it the same. <laughs> but uh, there you go. I'm going to start there. And I thank everybody for coming.